In today's video, I want to lay out for you the bull case for Bitcoin and the bear case for Bitcoin. As you've probably noticed, the markets have been pretty damn bearish recently, but basically most metrics that you want to look at, we are in a pretty gosh darn rough phase for the cryptocurrency markets right now. Stock markets, of course, also taking some pretty big hits. So in this video, I want to lay out the bear case as well as taking a look in the second half of the video what the bull case is for crypto moving forward. My name is Lark. Every day I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. If you do like that topic, like stay up to date with what's happening in the crypto markets, a quick tap on the thumbs up button to let me know that you do like that kind of stuff would be super freaking awesome. By the way, every single week, my team and I produce Wealth Mastery. It's a cryptocurrency investor report. So I help you get ahead of the curve in this fast moving market. Right now, we are running a 20% off promotion for a six month membership. Insane value every week. Altcoin reports, NFTs, DeFi tutorials, airdrops, token sales, and much, much more. You can sign up using the link down below in the description. Now, Let's go ahead and jump into this. Let's talk about the bear case. That's a scary looking bear, man. Scary looking bear right there. Now look, right now, Bitcoin, the entire cryptocurrency market, let's keep it real. Yeah, some people are still making some money in NFTs. Yes, you can still make money farming. Yes, you can still make money lending. You know, yes, there's shorting opportunities in the market. There's always a way to make money in the market. There's always opportunity in the market, just to be clear, very clear on that. But right now, we are in a very bearish period for these cryptocurrency assets. This is Bitcoin. Bitcoin, of course, is the tip of the spear. So when we look at Bitcoin, this is really indicative of what is happening in the entire cryptocurrency market right now. Bitcoin still trading well below key moving averages, not even close to the 200-day simple moving average, which for me is the bull bear line. When we're trading above that, market's bullish. Trading below that, market's bearish. Time to accumulate, right? Well, we're not even above the 50-day moving average anymore. Obviously, as we were talking last week, it was pretty exciting to see a break above the 50-day simple moving average. However, macroeconomic fears have drug us back under that line. So that is a bearish reality for the cryptocurrency markets right now. We also have seen the volume on cryptocurrency exchanges just absolutely freaking plummet. We are down 70% from the peak in early November where we had about $228 billion a day of trading volume. Now we're down to around $70 billion a day. Absolute freaking decimation in terms of the total amount of volume coming down. Obviously, people aren't really selling here. People are afraid to buy here. We have uh, lost a lot of retail interest. The unfortunate reality is that when the market's pumping and we're hitting new all-time highs for everything, people come flooding into the market. It's almost tragic in, uh, in the, the comedy of it all because the human mind does very strange things to people. Market's pumping, great time to buy. Market's dumping, I gotta sell now and take a big loss. But that's what people do. But the reality is, is that retail is not interested here. Um, you know, obviously smart money is still buying crypto, but a lot of people are not. Most people are holding their crypto. We have, we've got strong um, hodling going on right now. But the volumes are down massively, which is showing a, a very bearish trend, of course, for the cryptocurrency markets. We also have this here. This is uh, shared by the Rational Root over on Twitter, Bitcoin on-chain bottom indicators. So they have uh, the base case, which right now would be $36,300, as well as the worst case scenario, which would potentially see us coming back down to twenty eight thousand dollars which would be pretty gosh darn brutal i think that if we do go down into the twenty thousands again man that's gonna just shake out so many people so many people are gonna panic sell their crypto at the bottom but the reality is that twenty eight thousand uh, dollars it's an important area of price support um we saw of course that area anyway right around uh, $29,000 we saw back in July 2021. That's where we bottomed out, maybe even got down to $28,000. But uh, yeah, we could still see the prices going lower. Now we do, of course, always have people out there calling, hey, look, we're going to see, you know, $5,000 Bitcoin. It's going to zero, all this stuff. That's overly 
uh, bearish, that's overreacting to the bearish information that they have at hand. People always think that things are going to go to zero at the bottom and to the moon at the top. Human psychology, once again. Now, what the heck is spooking the market so gosh darn much? Well, one thing, obviously, which we've been talking about a lot here is the Russia-Ukraine conflict. And, you know, we have some very, very negative sentiment around this situation. People are thinking World War III is going to break out. People are thinking there's going to be, you know, some giant land war all across Europe. Poland's going to get invaded. The Baltic states are going to get invaded. All this terrible stuff's going to happen. Reality is probably none of that stuff's going to happen. If there is any kind of conflict, it will probably be very um, specifically only in Ukraine. As if a conflict even happens, cooler heads may, of course, prevail. But this is weighing very, very heavily on the markets right now. Positive announcements around this situation see the market pump a little bit. Negative announcements around this situation see the market dump a little bit. It's been uh, quite the thing to watch as the equity markets react heavily to this and the crypto investing markets react very heavily to this as well. So this is a very bearish scenario. And if we do see this break out and actually get bad, you know, if the bears, the, the war bears, I guess, if they get their, um, you know, wish come true, so to speak, and we do see a, a massive uh, conflict breakout, that is not good for anything. That screws up global supply chains from everything from semiconductors to oil to gas. I mean, it's just that's a mess. It's an absolute freaking mess, man. Not, of course, to consider the human toll, which is horrific. So let us hope that doesn't happen. But this is what uh, a lot of people are focusing on right now as a bearish catalyst in the market. Obviously, we have to mention Jet Clean, the best advertisement ever. Powerful suction. <sighs> I guess they're uh, sucking up all the, the crypto from the bottom cells. Anyway, besides the point, well-placed vacuum cleaner ad there. Fed rate hikes. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Inflation's out of control. We had another record inflation, worse since 1982 in January. People are very much focused on this situation right now. Some banks like Goldman Sachs are saying seven times we could see seven uh, interest rate hikes this year. JP Morgan said we could see nine. That would be one every single month for the rest of the year. The Federal Reserve hasn't given us definitive indications on how much and how often all this stuff, but we should find out in the next few weeks, of course, around this topic. But that uncertainty killing the market right now. So that's the bear case for crypto. Could see us going down into the $20,000 range if all this negative stuff continues to play out. But we are definitely in a bearish phase as we continue to trend under the key moving averages. Now let's talk about a potential bull case here for the cryptocurrency markets. First, this is an interesting chart to share with you. This is the number of active entities. So there are currently 275,000 daily active entities on the Bitcoin network. This level of activity is far below the bull market highs, which you can see obviously way, way back up there. Indicative, of course, of slow demand from new users. However, important, important here, the activity floor continues to climb even in these bearish market conditions, reflecting longer term network effects building up. So you can see the bottoms keep going up, 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 up over time, which is a good thing. It means we're building a strong floor of people involved in the network. The network effect continues to grow strength. You grow strength from the bottom. The tops are exciting and fun, but that's not where you build your strength from. Next, let's talk about the bit Bitcoin HODL wave. So the Bitcoin HODL wave shows just over 60% of Bitcoin has not moved in a year or more. That is absolutely in freaking credible. Of course, the other the other 40% traded hands probably quite a few times from people who bought at 65 or 69 thousand dollars and you know panic sold the bottoms and back and forth we go. However, a 60% HODL rate for coins that are a year or older is incredible. That means, of course, it's very easy to HODL when you're in profit, obviously. Anybody who bought Bitcoin before a year ago, you're in profit. You're sitting on gains. So it makes it a lot easier to HODL through all the crazy volatility. But nevertheless, you have 60% of Bitcoin 
in diamond handed holders. People who don't need to sell it, people who are opting out of the system, people who want a better monetary standard, people who just believe in everything that Bitcoin stands for, they're hodling on to their Satoshis. They're not panic selling on these dips. They're not selling because they're afraid of what the Federal Reserve's going to do. That's why Bitcoin was created. As a, as a counter to the Federal Reserve, man. Come on, come on. Also this here, uh, I'll just maybe make that smaller so you can see it a bit better. Bitcoin balance on exchanges just reached a three year low of 2.5 million Bitcoin. So you can see this has just steadily been trending down. Obviously we did have a big uh, sell off as a lot of the new money buyers capitulated here uh, mid 2021. However, what's very interesting is that all throughout this big move here, basically we have just kept going down. So people have been accumulating retail money continues to buy Bitcoin, uh, whale money continues to buy Bitcoin. We continue to have new addresses being created. Now we haven't had a big spike in new addresses created. It's a steady move up right now. However, we are still seeing new people coming in to the Bitcoin network. We're still seeing Bitcoin taken off of exchanges. So demands continue to go up, fiat on ramps are continuing to go up, all that stuff, and yet the balance continues to fall. So even though the, you know, the times are tough price-wise, people keep gobbling up Bitcoin for long-term hodling. This is the number of addresses holding 0.01 coins that just reached an all-time high of 9. Point, let's call it 9.5 million. Close enough, right? Again, that just helps us underline here that yes, the network is continuing to grow. New users are continuing to come in. So we haven't had this kind of massive parabolic rally in the number of addresses this time. However, you can see that the growth has been steady. It's just continuing to inch its way up. Now, let's talk about the macro factors. So we talked about the bear case for the Ukraine-Russia conflict, World War III, all that stuff. Well, it seems that Biden and Putin have agreed to sit down and meet to talk about the situation, to talk about what's going on in Ukraine. So that's a good thing potentially for the uh, equity markets. And of course, if the stock markets are doing good, crypto is doing good as well. So let's obviously hope that that meeting does happen, cooler heads prevail, and diplomacy prevails. That would obviously be a fantastic thing to see. So this is a, a bit of uh, a, a ray of hope if you will, that we could actually see a positive resolution to this conflict in Europe and that there's not going to be a hot war in Europe, which the markets would absolutely hate. So let's hope that this diplomacy moves forward and that we get a positive outcome from it. Now, in terms of Federal Reserve interest rates, well, unless World War III breaks out, then you do need to keep in mind that Federal Reserve interest rate hikes are actually historically bullish for markets with an average return of 7% for stocks in the following 12 month period. So the Fed's gonna start raising interest rates next month. That means starting from next month, we're likely to have a bullish 12 month period for stocks. Think about that, that's pretty crazy. And if stocks do well over the next 12 months then, you know, crypto's probably gonna do okay as well, which is a positive thing. It doesn't mean we're necessarily, you know, gonna have a mega super rally or Bitcoin goes to a million dollars in a year or something like that. But it does mean that we could see the markets recovering and starting to build into strength once again. Now, what am I doing? So bull case, bear case, you know, bull case here, of course, is that all this stuff is just being overblown. The market's overreacting to the, the war situation. Uh, the market's overreacting to the Federal Reserve interest rate stuff. The reality is that Bitcoin continues to be accumulated. The network's, you know, nice and strong and all that fun kind of stuff. Personally, I just keep accumulating. I bought some more Bitcoin yesterday. Not a huge amount, just a few thousand dollars worth. Continuing to add to my stack for the long-term hold. All of this short term stuff that's creating so much panic in the market is just that it's short term stuff. Now, whether that means it lasts for a few weeks or a few months or a year, it will end. I'm here for the long term. I'm still gonna be making videos in 2030. I'm still gonna be holding crypto in 2030. I'm still gonna be holding on to my Bitcoin. I'm still gonna be holding on to my Ethereum in 2030. 
I'm a long-term investor and I mean it when I say it. And because I'm a long-term investor, accumulating at lower prices, it feels good, man. It feels good. The insane thing about all this is you really need to flip the psychology around because yes, the markets are bearish right now, but what's that actually mean? Does that mean you should be scared and sell? It's actually the opposite. It means you're being given like a, a second chance here to accumulate great coins at a great discount, right? When the market's actually super bullish, it's actually a time to start taking profits and cashing out. But most people do the opposite. Anyway, just my two Satoshis for the day as always. You let me know what you think about this down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.